Welcome back to another week of instigating with Clarkie and Drury brought to you by our friends at Cool Bet Canada, the Listowel Squash Courts, and of course, Listowel Vision Care and See the Game. I'm Drury with Clarkie, and we are very pleased to be joined by one of our favorite guests and certified friend of the show, The Athletics, Sean Fitzgerald. Fitzy, how are you, buddy? I'm doing well. Listowel, the home of Jared Kiso and uh, the, the, the spiritual homeland of Letterkenny. That's right. And, and the home of Corey Connors. Let's not forget about Corey. All right. Swing. That the big too, stick. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> what happened to the Raptors last night? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I was playing beer league and uh, not playing it well. Um, I scored a goal, which is great. Uh, okay. They scored seven, which wasn't. Anyway, oh, well. um, we had a couple guys on the team who um, at the very beginning, they walked in and they're like, we do not want to know the score. Mm-hmm, do not mm-hmm, tell us the mm-hmm. score gonna watch it when we get home yep. so after the game after we got our butts handed to us a couple of folks sort of furtively looked at their phones and you could see who was checking because they were <laughs> looking across the room at each other and i didn't know exactly what the sign language was until i got to my car after yeah. and heard uh the damage yeah was it wasn't good i was sort of in the same boat i had to play squash last night we're going to talk to alan MacArthur from the squash course in a bit but i played squash last night i saw the first half at home and then i Push the record button. I thought, okay, I'm going to come home, watch the rest. Went out in the hot tub when I got back, and boy, that was a disappointing uh, set or third quarter. Wow. Your squash court. Anyway, has let's a talk hot hockey. Tub? Your squash court has a hot tub. Hold on. Hold on. I have a I have a hot tub. No, no, oh, I came home okay. to the hot tub. Is that yeah. part of the the rest and recovery, or is that correct? You have okay. to do that at my advanced stage. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is, this show's quickly turning into a just for men ad. All right. <laughs> I want to ask you a little bit. Speaking of scoring goals, now you scored a goal last joke? night. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was. I think it was. You, you you not, get that, am I not going to get that corporate sponsorship here, boys? <laughs> no, I think you should. I mean, out of respect, right? You're like, going to get a marker and write just for men here. I, I, I mean, you know what? I'm going to brand myself next time I come. Just for men community. colors your hair. It doesn't make it grow. Right, wow. It's a like, scalp. How was your scalp? I, that. I wonder genuinely what a company like that would pay somebody of Fitzy stature to <laughs> something like that to tattoo their logo on there. Even a henna for logo. like a few weeks, you know, like I wonder yeah. what the price tag, like what would you charge for that Fitzy? Like I'd be asking for at least a couple hundred grand. You know what? Like this is a lot of open real estate here. Who's mm-hmm. saying it has to be just one? Blank panel. You could, get, you could right. get the front panel. You could get the quarter panel. Like, <laughs> like I got a phone. Give me a call. The, the lower neck. Yeah, that's funny. You should you should talk to your your bosses at the athletic about some of these opportunities that you. I'm gonna get. get an agent now, boys. When we're done here, I'm calling an agent. I Perfect. love it, man. I, I got a guy. I'll send 10% for way. us for the idea. Uh, <laughs> ah, come on now, like 2%. Let's be fair to the guy. He's going to tattoo his head, Clarky. <laughs> All right. So you scored a goal last night, which is always fun. And let's talk quickly about a guy that scored a lot of them more than anybody this year in Austin Matthews. 60 goals. He's the first guy since Stammer to do it in 11-12. And it's just unbelievable the tear this guy went on after a slow start by his standards coming off wrist surgery, which is something long term that concerns me for his ability to continue doing this. But in the year that he just had was what he did in terms of bulging the twine this year. Was that enough for you to say yes, despite McDavid's points or whatever else you want to say, Goudreau at even strength, all of it? Was that enough to solidify, yes, he is the Hart Trophy winner? It's a tough one, right? Like, I mean, the Oilers aren't doing so terribly either. Um, but no, yeah, they're not. I mean, six, no, 60 goals is 60 goals. Is he the best? I mean, what you can say now is he's absolutely – that's a that's a narrow conversation, and you're probably down to about two guys at this point, right? Um, am I willing to go out there and say one's better than the other? Um, no, but I think, you know, if you're Austin Matthews and you look back a couple of years, um, I don't know if you would have had that same conversation because Connor McDavid was so, so it seemed like so much further ahead. So I think maybe the biggest compliment that I'd be willing to step out to here is that, you know, that, that gap is narrowed. That conversation is now a conversation, you know, and I think, I mean, you know, for who's better, who's this, you remember, remember the Taylor versus Tyler thing from 12 years ago, uh, Taylor Hall, Tyler Sagan who was going to go first overall. 
Um, you know, one was with the Windsor Spitfires and was with just a juggernaut of a, of a team. Um, and the other one was with uh, with Plymouth, but also had this this massive skill set. And then you go through the career and then one year, one kid wins a heart. Next year, you know, kid wins a cup. And now I think, you know, 10 years in, you're like, OK, who's better? Can you like who's had the better career? And I think I think that's when the real meat of the conversation between a McDavid and Matthews can happen. You know, when they're when they're 10 years in, when they're and it sounds weird for for Hall and Sagan to be saying they're winding down their careers, but they are. But that's that's when you take the full measure. Who do you for think me. will be? The, who do you think will be the finalists? Like who's that third guy? <laughs> that's a really good question. Like does I think can get in there. I think it's. I Goudreau, feel like it's biased but... against goalies. Yeah, I feel, like, I feel like voters compartmentalize business for goalies, hearts for forwards. Mm-hmm. Occasionally, you throw a defenseman in there as a pick. But he's from New York. Yeah, but uh, do what they does still that have, mean? like like it's it's a massive media market, but it's still hockey, right? Like yeah. it, it's sort of inverted on its axis. It's like you know, in the Canadian Football League, you know, the biggest market in the Canadian Football League is Regina, um, and that's where a lot of noise can come out of, right? Like in mm-hmm. in in the NHL, I, I don't know if New York is necessarily New York. I mean, certainly there's the East Coast bias. We all get to stay up and more of us watch games in the East than in the West. So potentially, but I mean, that is the fourth paragraph in a newspaper story. Who is third? Because everybody's going to be talking about the first two. Hmm. You're right. And and I think with Shesterkin, I think what, what might happen justly or unjustly, because what a season, I think that what might happen is voters are going to go, well, he is so, and he is, clear cut the Vesna winner that well maybe we don't need to make him a heart finalist and me personally even though and Yossi might suffer the same uh, and I should throw Makar in there as well for producer Adam I know he's screaming at the screen I think those two are both so clear cut battling for the Norris that I think that they might get shafted in terms of the heart conversation as well even though they shouldn't personally I think Goudreau will be that third guy I mean, he's got over 85 even strength points for the first time since the early 90s. It's insane what he's done at even strength this year. But I guess what it boils down to me is, for me is rather, when you talk to anybody in the league, the hardest thing to do in the NHL is score goals. And Matthews has done it at such a prodigious pace this year, more effectively than anybody else. And goals win games. And so I think that that might, along with some voter fatigue on McDavid, everybody knows he's quite clearly the most talented upper echelon hockey player. I think that that might push Matthews over the line. I'd vote for him myself, Sean. Yeah, I mean, if you're getting into the dynamics of, you know, voter tendencies and burnout, I, you know, you do wonder what, you know, an anti-Toronto faction might be. Um, mm-hmm. as many people as love the Leafs, hate the Leafs, um, if not more. Sure. Right? Like, yeah. It's mm-hmm. sort of the old Howard Stern principle that you have a segment of audience that listens because they adore Howard Stern and a segment of audience that listens because they hate him. Um, I feel like there's, there's that way about the Leafs. So, you know, that dynamic has to come into it too. Um, yeah, I, 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 you can't overlook 60 goals, but you also can't overlook the fact that Connor McDavid could at any second do something that, gets on a highlight reel that your grandchildren talk about. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you about the anti-leaf bias, but I also think him being an American is going to help with the American voters. I really do. The anti-leaf bias. uh, I'm just looking at your background there. Is that, thanks. Am I that a, yeah. Yeah. I'm not one of them. I wonder why he feels that way. (laughs) Not one of them. I I don't know. Wouldn't that be something if all, like if it was Goodrow, like all three heart finalists from Canadian teams two Americans, but still like, that's pretty, pretty good. Yeah, no, it's. Um, I'm sure yeah, Gary loves uh, it. It's it's the trophy that everybody loves loves to talk about more than the Stanley Cup for sure. Yeah, Gary Batman. He <laughs> Jerry, must love it. Jerry Batman. Yes. Um, <laughs> I I wonder as well. Uh, just in terms of not putting any pressure on pontificating about o- awards being given out. You know, Sean, we've all watched a, a lot of hockey and seen a lot of great goal scores in our day, and you know, you bring up. Stam Coast was the last one to do it. Of course, Ovi did 65 that year that he really went off. Um, just in terms of the guys that you have seen play, put into context for me just how good this season was by Austin Matthews. 
He joined a very rare, I believe he's just the 24th player ever to score 60 in a season, 24, 25. Um, just how good was this? He does things with the puck that goaltenders sort of talk about in quiet awe, right? Like shielding the angle. Um, you know, it's not just a toe drag. It's concealing where he's going to send it. Uh, the quick release, the power, the accuracy. These are all phenomenal things. And, and some of which, I mean, goaltenders, you know, they say about not seeing before, but I mean, literally don't see, right? Like it's it's a really tough thing to do to score in this day and age that um, I, I think you can you can take a look at the game's greatest goal scorers, and I think we're getting to a point in the game where you have to judge them by their era, by the era in which they played and not overall, right? Like it's, I mean, you know, baseball, you know, they try and compare through eras, but even then, I mean, you know, you had pitchers like, you know, Nolan Ryan and throw 185 pitches, and now you've got guys throwing 86 and they're pulled out. And is that the same? Like if you're a hitter facing a pitcher who's gone through the order four times in the eighth inning, like, is that the same as facing a new, like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Whereas if you take a look at goal, if you take a look at goal scoring, like, you know, God bless Wayne Gretzky, but he was shooting against guys who wore, you know, bed pillows um, who, you know, stood up and maybe couldn't bend over mm -hmm. all the way unless they maybe needed to get a smoke that, that fell on the ice or something. Um, whereas today, like, you know, you have, you know, goaltenders at the age of seven learning the reverse VH. Right. And, and, Crease to side to side, working on their you know um, crease presence, you know in practice at Tyke. And by the time they get up there, like you know they're they're wearing their large fellows, they're wearing uh, large pads, and they're absolutely um, machines and monsters in there. And you have you know coaches that have video and tracking and all of this technology and all of this advanced training, and you got to go and score against that. And to get sixty in a game, sixty in a in a year is is a hell of an accomplishment mm -hmm. um yeah, as i we just were... scored my first of the season in beer league last night and it was the season that was your out. first of the year did you get the puck uh no no they burned it <laughs> they burned <laughs> they burned it <laughs> they burned well, it every puck. into the into the sun clark sure bobby every puck that goes by him. exactly <laughs> yeah yeah hey uh so as we're recording friday morning last night of course both tampa well, Tampa lost, Boston won. So Boston's a point behind and still has a shot. They're playing the Leafs tonight. Um, the Leafs are resting Campbell, Matthews, and Marner. Um, what's the better matchup for the Leafs, do you think, Boston or Tampa? You know, we've gone through this where you're like, well, Columbus is a really good matchup. Uh, you go through Montreal, Montreal was a great one. Yeah. Montreal is a great matchup. You can't <laughs> ask for anything. Oh, whoops. Nope. Um, yeah, I mean, the fact of the matter is they've been doing this for decades, like literal decades. Like how old do you have to be to remember this team winning a playoff round at this point? Like, are you, you're what, a third or fourth year university student? I'm right? like 30. 2004, right? You know? So. And so they got to beat, they got to beat everybody. Um, but you got to start by beating one. I don't think, you know, the favorable matchup thing, this team has reliably pro proven through these, what is that? 16, 18 years. Um, that matchups really don't matter. Um, I mean, they didn't make the playoffs a lot through those 18 years either. Um, you just got to win. I mean, the matchups, nothing. You can face a team against Montreal that looks like they should have been golfing pretty early and then go and do what they did. You can face a pretty underwhelming Columbus team in the bubble and then completely fall all over yourself. Um, you can have stars disappear and not getting a shot on net, not getting a goal. Like at some point, which is now, Whoever you face, you just got to win. It doesn't matter the matchup because, you know, the Leafs have proven that they can trip all over themselves no matter who they're playing. And it, you know what? You, what you said about the stars showing up, they better show up. Like, there's no question they better show up or there's got to be changes. And Mitch Marner, you know, looking for 100 points. I texted my buddy the other night. I said he's getting in playoff form. I haven't seen him come close to a point here in that last game. but And he's not playing tonight, so he won't have the 100 mark. He, I think, has the most pressure on him than any other leaf and it's and i, I want to see how he handles this and uh he better he better perform i mean at this point it's not a team that's too young and learning no um it's not a team that um is besieged by terrible injuries um it's not a team that you know doesn't have the veteran presence <clears throat> it's not a team like there are no convenient excuses anymore mm -hmm. this is it and mm -hmm. i mean you can go back to last year's playoff collapse and you can have, you know, people who yelled and screamed on social media to say, you know what, 
this team doesn't have my heart anymore until they actually win a round. Um, this regular season doesn't matter. And you know what? Austin Matthews, everything else aside, it doesn't. Because you know what? What does? Mm-hmm. What's going to define legacies? How we're going to remember these folks? Mm-hmm. That's defined starting Monday. Yep. Um, you know, Rick Vive was the previous record holder. When you think back to Rick Vive and those years Leafs, what are you thinking about? You think about the glory of the, the franchise scoring record? No. You're thinking about how in the 80s, the Leafs reached in the deer. Nobody thought they'd ever breach until they breached it again in the last 18 years. No, this is, this is legacy time. Mm-hmm. This is it. Um, if this falls apart now, what do you do? Uh, it's not a tinker. Um, it's something else. So, you know, you talk about the Leafs with the most pressure on them. I think one of them is going to be sitting probably up in a media gondola mm-hmm. uh, looking down at the team that he built, probably Kyle Dubas. Um, mm-hmm. Like it's, this is go time. You have a, a record goal scorer. You have, um, you have, you know, Morgan Riley. You have Mitch Marner. You have John Tavares. You have, you know, not everybody you need. Um, do you have a goaltender? Well, I guess we'll find out. But yeah, everything we're talking about, the, the Shanna plan, uh, the rebuild, um, getting rid of Lou, keeping Kyle, all of that stuff, the analytics revolution. It, it really comes down to here. This is the time where legacies are built or this yeah. team just continues to be you know, the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> I, I'm i glad you kind of said that, Clarky. I guess I'll answer your question to Sean, you know, more pointedly because you summed it up perfectly there, Sean. It really doesn't matter who they play. At some point, these guys have to get something of substance done. I guess if you're going to look on paper, you would say they'd rather play Boston, which might surprise some people that I say that because of, the haunting ghosts of Boston. But if you're going to tell me on paper that both teams are healthy with Vasilevsky at the top of his game and Jeremy Swayman and Linus Allmark at the top of theirs, no disrespect. Those two played very well for the Bruins. Yeah. I, I guess you would say, and look at the forward depth too. And I'm sorry, all respect to Boston. I love Charlie McAvoy and Matt Grizzlick but they're not Sergachev and McDonough and Hedman and Schuster and Chernak. They're not those guys. So paper would tell you Boston, but paper, like Sean just said, means nothing and gets lit up into a, a burning pile of mothballs when the Maple Leafs play in the playoffs. That's just a fact. And I wonder too, you brought up Kyle Dubas and I have a funny quick story about him. I talked to him last night for about five minutes. He was at the Sioux Greyhounds Guelph Storm playoff game. I'm sure he was having a look at some guys for the upcoming draft. And uh, I had a quick chat with him just about the season and Matthews and all this stuff. And at that point, the Sioux was up 4 nothing. They ended up winning 5-4 in overtime. Guelph came all the way back. And at 4 nothing, he just said, and I swear to God, he turned around and looked at me and said, don't get too down. Everyone loves a comeback. That's what he said to me. And for for a guy like that, after what happened last year, to say that is almost black comedy. Like, it, I, I chuckled internally, like, geez, for Kyle Dubas to say everyone loves a comeback. I don't know if they do, Kyle. Um, but I think that, again, it, it bothers me almost to a degree because Lee fans and Clarkie does this too. And I understand why. Lee fans that I'm friends with will say to me, oh, well, it took your team and it took Ovechkin all 13 years and blah, blah. That was a very different roster with a very different constraint of salary cap with a very different group of guys that were not all making 10 plus million dollars. Washington did retool a lot. They could afford to. They had room to bring in Semin, Jason Arnott, Mike Knubel, Fedorov, that like they had room to tinker. This team really does not. And if Mitch Marner, who's a guy that I agree is going to get a ton of pressure and Matthews as well, let's keep in mind here. Austin Matthews has done absolutely nothing of substance to be remembered for in a playoff game ever. Has he scored a few goals? Yes, he has. He has not been a superstar that dominated a series and led his team to a series victory one single time. I can't remember a single game, even in games he scored. All right, Ryan. All right. He's the best player. No, (laughs) I'm being serious. And I think. No, you are. But I've heard it before from you. 
We've Seriously, heard it enough. I'm, I'm going to make a statement here. If 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 this group of players cannot eventually bar win a round, win a Stanley Cup with this type of salary structure that they went all in on, they will be the most let down, embarrassing group of talent ever assembled to never win anything. That is my opinion. That's pressure. I think, I mean, just on the Austin Matthews point, I mean, we do remember Austin Matthews' playoff games, and it's because he wasn't being played enough. Remember Mike Babcock? Remember that guy? Oh, mm-hmm. Patrick we remember Marlowe those games. We remember, we remember those games because Patrick Marlowe, who is 112 years old, was playing, you know, being double shifted in the third period, and Austin Matthews was getting, you know, 30 mm-hmm. seconds. Uh, that We remember that. So, I mean, the whole of the, you know, the playoff scope for Austin Matthews, the story hasn't yet been written, obviously. You're but right. Part of it, part of it wasn't his own doing. He wasn't the author of his own fate at that point, right? Like that was just some obscene coaching decisions that have never properly been explained. Um, but yeah, like the legacy for this, I, I don't know if it'd be, I mean, you can go back, like, you know, there's some Leaf teams where they, they'd go in and, you know, they'd go out and they'd spend and they'd bring in, you know, a Brian Leach, they bring in some pretty big names, they'd load up um, and before the salary cap, and then they'd go in and not do the thing they were supposed to do. Um, is this the worst ever? I don't know. Like, you know, they still needed goaltending. They weren't able to get goaltending. It's not, it's not the perfect setup to say this is, this is the Monstars from Space Jam, and they're absolutely going to win. Um, what I'm saying is that I think this is a legacy for this group as constituted, that this is going to be how you remember them. Yeah, the reason I said it is because, and and your point is fair, like all the times that they brought in Leach, Francis, Owen Nolan, I still remember that. There was no salary cap back then, nope. which has thrown a ton of strategy for every team. Look at Chicago and LA having to recycle rosters and still win Stanley Cups. Pittsburgh. The reason I say it is because, no, are they the Gretzky Oilers or the bossy Trottier Islanders? No, they're not. But it's not fair. I thought of a comparison the other night somebody brought up to me. Remember the Winnipeg Jets and God rest Dale Howard Chuck and and those great teams he led? Remember the Vegas Golden Knights? The Vegas (laughs) Golden Knights? Yeah. But, But the Howard Chuck Jets, an unbelievably good team could not get over the hump of Edmonton or Calgary running into juggernauts every year. There's no salary cap. You could keep teams of six or seven future hall of famers together if you could afford it. And eventually Peter Pocklington couldn't. So I think the reason I made that statement that this will be the worst money in comparison to what they're making now, though, that's what I mean. They're, they're not the monsters sweet reference, original space jam. They're not the monsters, but they're being paid like they are. But then, even then, like, not really. Like, it, they're making lots of money, but I, I don't know. And now you're going to get me sounding like a socialist here. But no, they're making no. lots of money, but are they being paid? Like, you know, Bell and Rogers are multi billion dollar companies. Are these guys really, truly being paid their value? I, anyway, that's a whole other thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's economies of scale. Like, back then, what the, the league was worth and what players were making and, um, you know, now we're talking value for services rendered. Um, no, I think, you know, if they flop, it'll be historic. People will scream. Uh, you know, jobs will probably sadly be lost. I mean, I'm just trying to wrap my head around the, you know, is it, you know, in all of history, the most cataclysmic, um, dramatic flop? I don't know. Like, literally, the Golden Knights just went out and got Jack Eichel and didn't make the playoffs. Like, mm-hmm. that's, you know, if that was in Toronto, um, you know, like there'd be things on fire right now. Yeah. Um, I agree. Downtown. You know what I mean? But like, I think that's worse. That's my point though. We're judging Vegas... these things against the context of the fact that this franchise has been a garbage fire since 1967. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah thanks. <laughs> hey, um, Sorry, I'm just yeah. checking through my list of excuses. Well, okay, you haven't been a garbage fire since 67. No, I haven't. I've been just checking through my list 17 of excuses. 17 max. I, I use the, the list of excuses every playoff season. Um, but, but right at the top of the list um, is the officiating. And Here you we go. think you think well, wait a minute, you have nothing to say about officiating. I read your Twitter every once in a while. But my question though is Sean, is it gonna be like you know, just do whatever you want again in the playoffs, or do you think they'll actually keep calling how they've been calling it? And in particular, cross-checking, which Montreal cross-checked their way to the final last year. 
they cross-checked their way to the final. They did so. Oh my god. That's a pretty that's a pretty harsh judgment. They did. They broke ribs. No, I mean, they I never think, scored I mean, a goal. I have I have questions with how a professional sports organization can have a set of rules in a book, nicely typed, mm-hmm. single spaced, mm-hmm. uh, widely available. Yeah. And all of a sudden, when it gets warm outside, nobody can find the book. Thank you. But that's not just for I agree. beloved heroes who play at 40 Bay Street. Like that's that's mm-hmm. all across. That's that's sort of, you know, accepted axe murder um, for two months of the year. I don't, yeah. I don't fully understand that. I don't know how that enhances the product. I think that hues to something that, you know, hockey used to appeal to 50 years ago. Um, certainly, you know, that's that's not necessarily the hockey that's being played. We're, we're paying skills coaches again at very young ages to develop this incredible skill uh, and not break ankles like Bobby Clark on a Russian. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's you're, you're paying obscene amounts of money to go watch skill and right. not have somebody ride them like a, like a coattail. So yeah, I don't know why it's like that. Um, I would hope it doesn't continue, but I also wouldn't bet your money uh, on that changing. Mm -hmm. i i think that any of us listening or watching would get severe alcohol poisoning if we played a drinking game to hear the amount of times that we are going to hear the word in reference to the way these games are officiated battle that that is the nhl's favorite word when it comes to their officiating and any time criticism is levied toward Gary Bettman and any and Stephen Walcom, who has the biggest part to play in this as the director of officiating the amount that they that is their crutch word the battle the battle of the playoffs guys battling and it's an excuse and a cop-out word for when their officials let Connor McDavid and Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner and Sidney Crosby and Alex Ovechkin and whoever get hemorrhaged in front of the net by defensemen and it doesn't get called. It it's it's a weird way to run the championship tournament of your sport when you're right, Sean. The rules are very black and white, we think, based like, on the book that's available. Do officials call a different set of rules in the Super Bowl than they do in week two? between the Broncos and the Giants? Um, No. I mean, it doesn't mean that, you know, things are inscrutable. I still don't know what pass interference is. Um, But, like, yeah, if you're offside in week two, you're offside in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, Here, you cross-check somebody, uh, Mm -hmm. you hold somebody, you impede somebody, you obstruct somebody um, in, you know, October versus May. I don't know why those things get forgotten. I, I don't know if I pin it on the individual referees. I suspect it has to come down from up top because if change really was being advocated, it would be very easily advocated from up top. I completely agree. And and I'll say this, there will be some wild articles written if Connor McDavid and Austin Matthews in particular, just being where they are in terms of the status of the game, if they don't draw any penalties in this playoffs. Like last year, like McDavid didn't draw a single call. Like it, it baffles the logic of the mind. It challenges your human perception of logic, internal logic. When you go, these two guys for my money right now are the best players in the league for different reasons. They have the puck constantly and they don't draw penalties why like basketball LeBron James at hit LeBron James took 30 free throws a game it felt like because someone sneezed toward him like basketball the star player like if you flick a guy it's a free throw not hockey though the battle it's all about the battle Mm. I don't know it's bizarre who do you think is going to win the Stanley Cup are we placing a are we placing a wager here? 
Are we wagering with my money or with uh, with Clarky's money here? Always Clarky's money. Clarky's hot tub money. Are we are we wagering with Clarky's <laughs> yeah, hot right. tub money. Yeah, if the leads get right. put out, Clarky has to sell the hot tub and give the <laughs> profits. To I the probably you. make a pretty good profit. I bought that pretty cheap, and nowadays it's probably about five times. Anyway. Probably, probably. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I was just down in Tampa on a family vacation um, and watched the Lightning lose to the Montreal Canadiens in a shootout. Um, so I'd want to say Tampa is pretty well positioned to go again and run it back. You know, they've got the goaltending they've got in Victor Hedman, they've got, you know, they've, they've got the band back, but I've also, you know, seen them stumble a bit down the stretch. Um, and they don't have anybody who's been on IR since October, ready to jump back through the curtain and step on stage like they have in the past. So, I mean, I'd say Tampa. Um, and I, I think maybe Colorado, those, those would be my top two. What a final that would be, Tampa. Clarky. What do you think? Ooh. Well, I, I mean, let, let's find out who Tampa's <laughs> playing first. Like, I can't pick okay. Tampa without knowing. Um, no. Just pick the Leafs and move on to the West. The Leafs, Calgary. Okay. The Leafs in Calgary? Yeah. Something, I don't know what it is about Carolina that just jumps no out at me. Way. I love Carolina. I don't know what it is. That's and come back and I home. think Calgary will get there in the West. I'm sorry, Adam, with your Colorado Avalanche. I just... Well, how many know, games like, before Kadri gets suspended? That's my question. Two or three. Two or three. Um, and then, you know what? I'll give you a dark horse, too. I love Minnesota. Mm. Something about Minnesota with Flurry and I, Kaprizov flying around. And the they're a team that's built for this battle, you know, system with the playoffs with Felino flying around out there. Something about old Minnesota. I, I like that team a lot. Dean Evison, former Caps coach. I love it. All right, Sean, we really appreciate this. We've wasted a ton of your time. Good luck with the with the sponsorships. Thank and, you. Uh, and let us know if you land one, and we'll have you on the show. Oh, you'll know if I land one, because it'll be right over here. <laughs> Absolutely. He is Thanks, Sean fellas. Fitzgerald, senior writer with The Athletic. We always appreciate his time. Thanks, Sean. All right, we'll take a quick break here on Instigating. When we come back, our friend Alan MacArthur from the Listowel Squash Courts, one of our great sponsors, will join us here on the show to talk about the end of their men's league season. Clarkie, is he going to climb the ladder? Who knows? We'll talk about that next here on Instigating. <laughs> Welcome back to Instigating with Clarky and Drury, brought to you by our friends at Cool Bet Canada, the Listowel Squash Courts, and of course, Listowel Vision Care and See the Game. Thanks to senior writer with the Athletic Sean Fitzgerald for jumping on with us and uh, swapping talk on the game we all love, hockey. Now let's talk about another game we all love. And well, I don't know if Clarky is necessarily in love with it anymore. Let's what? talk to our friend Alan MacArthur from the Listowel <laughs> Squash Courts. Alan, how are you? I, I got, the, I got, I'm good. I got the inside scoop on Clarky. I got. It all. I got let's, it all. Let's so hold on. It. Set. Let's okay. set it up. Let's set it up. We we okay. been having a ladder all year. You know, it's Jacob's ladder, and uh, he's <laughs> he's basically run away with it. Now yeah. Alan's run in the last two or th- two weeks, I guess, the year end double knockout championship tournament. Yes. And we're down to our final three, aren't we, Al? We are. Yes. Do you want who's to... the final three? Yeah. Well, let me. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it a bit. Like. You don't have to get right into it, Chris. We can. Okay. I'll show you the. How, how have you been in the tournament? You're in the tournament. I'm in Tell the tournament. How you've been doing? Well, I think I've. I mean, I've had COVID, and yeah. I haven't got my lungs, and I cough, yeah. and I cough, and I cough, yeah. and I cough, and it's not fun. Yeah. Um. So I've struggled with with the. Uh, with you know the, the uh, I, I yeah I've been a little tired. It takes little it does tired. take a lot of um stamina, right? Like and, and it COVID, does. I've heard that uh from a lot of people. COVID yeah. has just knocked them down. So I no, I get it for yeah. sure. Um so, so this is the, the so, eighth side. So we we got it, we gotta also tell people who are just listening to the show here. We're yep. we're showing a chart with the double knockout tournament. The top We've half got, is the we players got the who, playoff bracket here, the yeah. NCAA bracket. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So the top the top half is for the uh, people who have not lost, and the bottom half is for the people who have lost a game. And then if you lose two, you're out. Right. Right. So That's where right. are we now? Um. So we we started we started with Chris there, right? Yeah. Or and Randy. Yeah. Win win for Chris. Then I played Bill Watson. Good guy. Stop twenty three. Chris. Yeah. Chris. Yeah. Or Chris. Yeah. So, and oh, then Chris. Oh. Still Chris. Yeah. 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 He's, he's no way. There. He's there. 
Is so there, I'm there, Ryan. So all your there. little jabs. I am in the final three. I am there. Okay. So wow. I lost I'm, a game. I did lose a game, but I'm in the final. I gotta three. be honest, man. I'm I, I, like genuinely. I mean this because I I feel like Sean Fitzgerald and I ripped on you for a good half hour. I, I'm genuinely proud of you. Good Thank for you. you. Thank you. Yeah, Gen- we had, genuinely. And last night we uh, we had to do back to back games to uh, get to the final three. Um, and I, I was very, I was tested last night. It was, it was a fun night. Um, played Rob. What's Rob's last name? Martin. Rob Martin. Um, and I beat Rob and then I p- had to play Alex, uh, Parkhouse and Alex never gives up on a ball. And I was panting and I was out of breath and, uh, I somehow came back twice with him having 10 points and going to overtime and beating him in overtime wow. twice. I beat him wow. three games to one, but two of them went into overtime. Um, and uh, it was a good battle. But, uh, yeah, I'm there, Ryan. I'm there. Final yeah. three. I actually would have been good. I wish I would have been here to see. It would have been some really good matches, good rallies. It was rallies. standing room. Lots only. of sweat. I, I had to mop this morning a lot. Yeah. Yes, good. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. I'm sure you did. I, I got to be honest. Ser- like, seriously, Clarky, if you like, if you make the final – I'll I'll come watch. I feel like producer Adam, we gotta come and do a full show like production. It, it'll take up the <laughs> bulk I, of the next episode. It, and which will be good because at about that time, if my math's correct, the Leafs will be eliminated. And so we can use this <laughs> as a lift up, an inspirational story for Clarky and all of the four one uh the four one six. This can you can be the cover of Drake's next album, Clarky. Well, let's set it up and I'll play Jacob and it, it won't be the final because the final's tomorrow. So, uh, but let's set it up that we'll come, we'll do a show there. We can set up up top out and oh, yeah. uh, we can, yeah. we can do a show and I'll play Jacob. And like after about two and a half minutes, when he beats me three games to nothing, then I'll come up and finish the show in, in, in my sweaty self. Sure. And I'll take, I'll, I'll take Ryan. I got Ryan. <laughs> You're okay, going to play yeah. Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Be- there, deal. Okay. That'll be quicker than Ryan plays Alan. The other game. No, no, no. Uh, yeah. No, so no. Greg Ford beat me. Um, I wasn't in the game. I had a terrible game. I unforced errors. He's a good player, but I had a lot of unforced errors. I yeah. served the ball out like four or five times in the first that's, game. Like you can't do that one. against a top a top no. player because it just no, sets no. you back. So yeah. anyway, um, okay. that's the way it goes. But whatever yeah. you say, Andy Roddick. Um, but then, but then tomorrow, uh, you know, when the finals and then the the uh, all the people in the in the uh league get to play a pro right yeah yeah i have uh cameron seth coming down he's uh originally from fergus um going to school at a waterloo now he's uh yeah he's sixth in canada so he's up there like in wow. comparison i'm uh i'm uh 4169 in canada <laughs> so hey ryan you keep that number in mind right um but he's gonna bring his brother down he's uh uh, his brother Avi is is top twenty in Canada. Recently won the Canadian University Champs. Um, he's up there. The whole family is insane into squash. But uh, Cameron's been talking to me the last few years, and uh, he's going to come down tomorrow and play everybody in the men's league, kind of as a perk of being in the men's league at at Listowel Squash Courts. Uh, Isn't he going to get so tired playing everybody? You yeah, better play funny. Jacob last. No, it was funny because he's like, uh, he, he wanted to be honest, right? And I've talked to him a lot and I've I've been really honest with him. Um, I'm not a great player. I'm just a regular guy. Chris knows this. He's played me. Um, I'm just a regular guy that liked squash and, and felt a need for it in the community. Uh, so brought it here. Um, but uh, we're talking with Cameron. It was, it was kind of funny because he was trying to be humble about it. But he's like, so how many guys? I'm like, well, 20 to 25 guys, probably. Uh, he's like, okay. Uh, Give me an hour and a half, five minutes a guy. They'll be lucky to get a serve. I'm like, okay. I'm like, there's only one guy you maybe have to watch about is is Jacob. And and uh, I still have to touch base with Cameron to see if he wants to play him first while he has all his energy or. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's got to have some sort end. of. Yeah, he's got to play him at the end for sure. At the end, you think? Yeah. Yeah, you give for him sure. Handicap? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Give I Jacob love a little like. Break. I love the like immense confidence antler that he's got on. Like what? that is. <laughs> That is yeah. some showboating. I really well, love it. I mean, you make it to pro, you got to be able to. Oh, to, dude, it's a different game, right? Like it's, these guys yeah. are just another Joes level. versus pros. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Like oh, if, yeah. Ryan, if you're around tomorrow, um, Saturday, uh, the 
the 30th, uh, stop on down around 3 p.m. He's going to be playing all of us. Uh, the finals is at 1 p.m., but if you come down and check it out, it's going to be some intense squash. Like, even the finals is going to be pretty crazy. It'll be some good matches. I would love to go. Unfortunately, as our uh, our listeners of CKNX Junior Hockey will know, I will be all in right. Stainer. Yes. Mm. I will be in Stainer, 230 puck drop, which, I mean, now I guess yeah. now is the go best Mitchell. time to bring that go up. Go Mitchell. The, the Mitchell Hawks and Clarky. Yeah. Clarky's son-in-law is the equipment manager. Ducky, we yeah. love Ducky. Yeah, um, yeah the Josh Mitchell Keel, Hawks. GM. Yeah. Josh Keel, our buddy. We've had him on the show. Louis the, the coach. GM. Yeah. Louis Livingston, great guy. Holden Lansing, yeah, yeah. also a legend. Um, Ooh, yeah. Yep. They have now, uh, they've got after Thursday night's game three in Mitchell, a two, one lead following two overtime wins over the Stainer Siskins of the Carruthers division and boy, two more wins. And the Mitchell Hawks will be the first North conference champions from the Pollock division since Louis Livingston's 2013 wing of Ironman, who of course lost wow. the finals to Essex. So it's a big deal around here. This yeah. is a big local story. The Mitchell Hawks, and and I will say before we continue this squash conversation, what a comeback because the Mitchell Hawks, basically the entire team was sick and could barely play in game one, and they got waxed 8 nothing, and then they went into Stainer on last Sunday, and what a gutsy effort with a 3-2 overtime win and then 4-3 in overtime on Thursday night, Stainer two thirty puck drop Saturday, Sunday back in Mitchell. It's it's going to be wild. All right, now back to squad. Hey, yeah. Okay. No, another right, question. Yeah. Another question for you, Al. Can yeah. you walk back to the uh, to the chart? Yeah. Okay. Sure, so, um, no, the, the chart, uh, Ryan. Just so you know, there was like a top bracket and a bottom bracket. Okay. Yeah. The top was the undefeated. No, no, no. But there was another like. So no- so yeah, yeah, the league we split up into two divisions basically. So okay. we did the top and the bottom. Yeah, um, I was in the top. It, yes, yeah. yeah. Just to be, just to be clear, I was yeah, in the top. Right. Now, and if it, you look at the bottom division, and if you can zoom into the bottom uh, or story, there's a name there that will recognize That's our, our Val Sabby. So, Steve, what happened to Steve, by the way? Uh, he's He just ran into some time issues, and it just didn't work out. Um, but he played he started, a game. He didn't yep, do he started, yep, Yeah, He started up here. Yeah. Um, and then dropped down and then was unable to, unable to, to make it. So now who's um, on the top, who's playing in this bracket at the finals? You, well, come on, this is your chance to pump your tire. Yeah, yeah. So, so I started right around there. Right? And you can see kind of how this goes, Ryan. Alan, 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 look at that, Ryan. He's in there. Okay. I'm He's in there. In I play, I play my semifinals tonight. Oh, and tonight. Wayne is like, Wayne is like, the joker to my if i'm batman he's my joker like he's he's uh he's been on me all season um, if i'm batman he's my joker. is that good is that what they want? <laughs> you guys like more sports related ones though right that's okay. so good uh, come on hit me yeah so no we we've, we've played so many matches and honestly wayne is like me and him are just we've battled in the middle of the league um hard and we've had some most of our matches go five games and if not overtime, like 15, 17, like insane uh, matches. And just um, like, they're the nights that I have to debate. Do I go home and I, do I sleep on the couch or do I have a shower? Right. Cause I'm not getting into bed. If I'm smelling, like I'm smelling, like you're just dripping of sweat. Um, trying to get at that ball and those match tight matches in this, in this league have just been um just awesome. Even to watch, like I'm, I'm by myself stopping in here some nights just to check out uh what's going on with the with the men's league and who's playing um but it's been it's been really good it's been really good and it's all about the members like these guys have been awesome to me they've been working with me it's the first ever um squash anything in list wool um so i'm really just kind of trying to figure out what works for for the guys and they're really um they've been awesome working with me it's been great it has been fun You've yeah, been awesome sure. to work with in terms of in terms of us, and I know Clarky loves it, and Sabby, of course, our buddy is is big on it too. And yeah. uh, I mean, it's an incredible facility. Like for anybody listening or watching that wants to go down there and get active and get into squash, like the facility is really, really top end, and you run a really tight ship over there, Alan. Uh, like, how can people t- like tell people who maybe aren't familiar how they can get involved? You guys have a Facebook page; you're easy to find. How can yeah. they get involved and become a member? 
Yeah. So I'm huge on social media, Instagram, Facebook. I really try to keep up on those and keep those people in the loop. Um, I try and keep up on the website as well, Uh People can give me a call at 418-4444. Uh, Alan at listwellsquashcourts.ca is my email. Um, it's really easy to become a member. The first time I, I usually meet you at the courts, you do your consent form, which is a one-time thing. Uh, I keep them all on file. So it's after that, it's pretty simple. Uh, if you become a member, which we have lots of different membership options, um, range from $70 up to $350, uh, depending on your budget and how much you like to play. Uh, we pick something that, that's gonna suit you. Uh, we get you the keyless entry fob. Um, so you just tap in and out. We get you signed up with Club Locker um, for the online booking. So that's how I, uh, that's how I knew my, uh, overall Canada ranking. Uh, so that, that gets thrown in there too. It's actually kind of cool website. I don't know if Clarky's looked at it much, but they break down your games and, and kind of give you some graphs and stuff to kind of look at. And mine's pretty and good. Yeah. I haven't looked at yours. Is it all green? Uh, well, all green. close. I have one red or two red, both yeah. to Jacob for sure. But all right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's fun. It's good. I like how yeah, they do it. It's neat. So we, we really try and keep it simple. So after you're signed up as a member itself, you, you really don't have to see me if you don't want to see me. A lot of these people are coming in and playing, mm-hmm. um, book online, show up, tap in. If they want me here to check out the pro shop and I have some rackets and some balls and stuff, they can, they can message me and say, hey, listen, I play tomorrow or I play next Monday at this time. Uh, can you stop by? And I, I swing by and make sure they need to get everything they need and, and we carry on. So it's it's a facility that I really like to try and tell people to treat as your own. Um, make it feel like it's yours. Uh, walk in, um, take everything out that you bring in, and and carry on. Everybody's been happy so far. And you're doing some restringing now. If you have a broken string, I am. Yeah, I'm trying to keep everything in house. So I sell yeah. new rackets. I have the used ones to use and restring. Um, members uh, get a bit of a deal on restringing, um, and it's neat because I can kind of keep your file. And if you like it a little your strings a little looser, a little tighter, I can adjust and, and mm-hmm. we can carry on pretty nice. Yeah. And what, what's the plan now for the summer and fall? Are you going to do anything in the summer when it comes to the league? Or are we just going to pick it up in the fall or have you decided? Um, so the, the league I'm going to keep running. I think I'll keep it open, uh, drop it down to once every two weeks, just because everybody gets so busy in the summer. Running so you won't drop me down weekend. to like 15th if I miss a week? I well, can't. yeah, it depends. Maybe. <laughs> um, no, I think I'll just try and keep it a little more yeah. uh, relaxed that way and keep it yeah. as more of a social end. Uh, okay. So guys can jump in and, and find new guys to play. It's been great for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, people connect with people in their same caliber of play. Uh, so it's awesome. to get some good games. Um, and then September, we're going to fire it up. We're going to go hard. Um, I'm going to try and get uh, women's league going as well. Nice. Uh, really pushing for that. Uh, get a men's league, maybe double the size. So I was up to 29 people. I would love to hit that 50 mark. Mm -hmm. Um, Give everybody a lot of people to play a a variety, Uh, see different people's um, playing styles, check it out and and play them. Uh, So that's going to be the the idea for September. Um, And then I want to hopefully end off with a Patty Fest uh, uh, tournament to, to end the men's league with the pro coming back down with another pro. So he's going to bring a, another guy with him um, and they're going to play each other. So we're going to sit around and we're nice. going to watch live nice. pro match, right? Nice. Like it's, it's going to be something that Listville's never seen. And, and a yeah. lot of people in Listville will never see. So yeah. um, kind of open up that end of it too. And, and let people see um, when they walk in on a Thursday night and, and check out uh, Chris and Steve playing how, how it can these guys are you guys are good but these pros are just like you oh. said it's another level right it's a whole nother level at least another level yeah. <laughs> probably yeah. five at, other at levels. least yeah. another yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely and uh you know if you're gonna do that like the the patty fest thing to end it off get the pros down i feel like that is something we should mark on the instigating calendar to yeah. make sure that we are in attendance for, we should probably get some cameras on that. Uh, so producer Adam book, book that ahead for next March. If you please, Alan, yeah. we appreciate this, man. The facility's great. I'm glad it's doing well. Uh, yeah. I certainly hope you can get a women's league rolling. That would be yeah. awesome. Um, you can get Kate find- out there. Ryan, I I'll try. Well, Kate's pretty busy with ball hockey right now. So, uh, but okay. 
I uh, she runs the league and refs it, but I'll Ooh. drag her over there. Absolutely. My We're girlfriend Sue fine. has come out a couple times and she enjoys it, and uh, awesome. she would love another female to play. So maybe get Kate out there and they can play. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, I can I can make that happen. So yeah, again, list will squash courts. They're on Facebook. They're on Instagram. Uh, you can email Alan, of course, Alan at list will squash courts. I mean. It, it's easy to become a member if it's something that you're thinking about doing. I highly recommend it. The facility's fantastic. Alan, we appreciate you doing this, brother. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks, Al. All right. Well, that's it for instigating. Unless, Clarky, you have you have one final thought? Well, this is it. This is put up or shut up time when it comes to the Maple Leafs. And, uh-huh. uh, w- like, by next Thursday, we're going to have a good indication of how things are going. And I can't wait to talk. And uh, go Leafs, go. And this is their year. I'm telling you right now, this is their year. On the golf course. This is the year Gosh. they all break 80 Gosh. at Coppinwood. Yes. No, Mid- we'll see. I, I hope that happens. Mid-July, for maybe. Mid-July, maybe. Mid-July. Right. Yeah. Mid-July Let- is fine. After the parade. Yeah, I, yeah. I I almost kind of hope it happens for you. You you Thanks, probably Thanks. you probably you Thanks. probably at this point, 55 years, you probably deserve it, don't Thanks. you? <laughs> All right, that's it for instigating. You can watch this show Friday nights at 8, Sunday nights at 9 with our friends on Whiteman TV. That's channel 6 for Whiteman subscribers. We debut on our YouTube channel Fridays at 9. You can follow us on social media at Instigating Pod. We appreciate Sean Fitzgerald and our buddy Alan MacArthur for joining us. We'll be back next week with more Instigating. Go Leafs, go!